Now people are excited a lot about Tailwind's just-in-time compilation mode which allows you to put arbitrary styles inside alongside of your Tailwind styles which is absolutely crazy and it's a great piece of technology and software. Hey everyone welcome back and in this video I want to discuss an interesting topic which a lot of people who are new to CSS frameworks and utilities ask that is what is the difference between Bootstrap and Tailwind and what you should go with your first project, your nth project, which one should you choose basically. So in this video, let's discuss a step-by-step -step breakdown of what these two things are. When you should be figuring out you should use Bootstrap, when you should be figuring out you should use Tailwind and when you should be using none. Let's go. If you're new here, make sure you leave a like, subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon. This is free of cost and helps the channel grow. Let's start with when you should be using none of these. Well, the answer for that is very, very simple. If you are not confident with CSS, the language itself, if you're not able to write basic classes and IDs and style them, give a little bit of layout, you know, arrange elements in a flex box or even in a grid format and figure out how you can create a particular layout in a specific way, maybe just going a little bit ahead and also trying to convert things into responsive design. If you cannot do all of this, then it is not the time to pick a framework or a CSS library like Bootstrap or Tailwind. That is absolutely not the time. If you're starting with any video or any tutorial which tells you to learn HTML and then directly shift to Tailwind or Bootstrap or any other CSS framework, they're probably doing it wrong. I sincerely believe that in order to use these solutions, you should still know how CSS works internally right you should be able to write proper css you should be able to make sure you are understanding what you are writing and you should be able to do a lot of common operations with it so for those of you who now have a little bit of experience with css and can work your way around let's understand what is the difference between tailwind and bootstrap and which one should you pick so starting with bootstrap you can see that bootstrap is actually a ui kit CSS framework and Tailwind on the other hand is a utility first CSS framework. So what is the difference? The difference is UI stands for user interface. That means Bootstrap gives you complete user interface itself. Now when I say that if I go to documentation and start seeing inside components what you will see is if I have these alerts. I mean alerts is fine but let's take a look at these collapse for example. So you can see I have actual buttons which collapse and you know just just makes the text visible and invisible again and again similarly for horizontal we have different animation styles animation methods and you can see that it's not really a CSS framework as well it does involve a lot of JavaScript right so bootstrap is not just CSS it is actually a complete UI framework like I said that means it can involve a bunch of JavaScript as well you can see we have an accordion widget as well which is a very common use case right if you are creating a website with an FAQ or some sort of area where you want these accordions to appear you might want to have that tailwind on the other hand like I said is a utility first CSS framework this means what Tailwind is really doing is that it's trying to restrict the scope of CSS. It's trying to restrict what you can do with CSS. And I'm going to tell you how it does that. It does that in the way that it gives you very good defaults available out of the box. So let's take a look at padding, for example, in Tailwind. You can see that Tailwind, what it does, is it gives you a lot of default classes available. Now you can see right here, that we have certain values for class P0 is padding 0, this is padding 1 pixel, then we just go into rims, right? Now the good thing about this is that there is padding 4 and padding 5 and you have 1 and 1.25. What you can do or what you should be doing as a developer is that if you are creating a UI yourself, you just use a padding 4 every other widget you are using on the site. So what it does, it makes your styles a bit consistent, right? And when you are doing this, this gets applied and if you want to change this to a maybe a different value altogether you can overwrite that using the tailwind configuration as well so i do believe like more than anything what tailwind does best is it restricts the scope of css which allows you to not just be hacking with values all the time 
So instead of like having a 10 pixel padding there, then a seven pixel here and two pixels there and trying to figure out the margins, you have these set classes which can be used. And this is also like no longer true really with the Tailwind just in time. That's a different story. But for now, the inbuilt classes, the inbuilt things you can see, first of all, they have the advantage that they can directly be applied to the element. So you don't have to manage a class name and then go to the element and then write the class name and then do it. So it's technically not in line CSS, but also is kind of, so you don't have to worry about that. And second of all, like I said, it restricts you in a certain value domain, right? Certain things which you can use. And it just kinds of makes things a little bit more easier, symmetrical for a lack of better word, while you're applying styles, while you're applying layouts and stuff. So you can see with shadows again, this is one, Thing which is tricky for a lot of people is what is a good way to give shadows to the elements right so tailwind defines certain classes which have really nice shadows if you want to lift the element a lot you use a large shadow if you just want to lift it a little you use a smaller shadow but these defaults have been put in place for you right you don't have to worry about what should be the shadow and you know for a little lift little more little more and so on right so this is not something you have to worry about similarly for inner shadow what are some same defaults but because if you have used css you know that these values can take so many values i mean the box shadow would be able to take the x offset the y offset the amount of shadow the color this and that so sure if you want to go down that route you are most welcome to do that but if you're somebody who just wants to get started with a project with some sane default values like i've been saying this is your choice now people are excited a lot about tailwind's just in time compilation mode which allows you to put arbitrary styles inside alongside of your Tailwind styles, which is absolutely crazy and it's a great piece of technology and software. But I do believe that you should not be using Tailwind CSS if you only intend to use it for the JIT part, right? Because this is basically just writing CSS. At this point, it's basically just writing CSS because you're just doing hex values or you're doing some custom width and heights. And this is maybe just a little smaller syntax. But if you are just trying to use it like this, like this example, where they have pretty much just written all the arbitrary values and that's all you do in a project, you should probably just consider using regular CSS, right? So this is like another case of not using any sort of framework. So if you're doing anything which involves a little bit of, you want to have some sane defaults and you know that you would be using some sane defaults provided by Tailwind, then you should absolutely go ahead and use it. All right, so the big question now is, what do you use, Bootstrap or Tailwind? Well, this is a subjective question, to be honest, and I would prefer that you try out both of them first and see which one fits better with your flow. Now, for example, Bootstrap is awesome. You will be able to bootstrap literally a lot of websites directly without spending a lot of time. You would get headers and footers and sections and this and that. But if you're trying to play with CSS in a decent manner and you also want to build something interesting and something which does not look like every other website might be using, then Tailwind might also be an interesting choice, right? And Tailwind does have a component level solution as well. There is Tailwind UI, it is a bit expensive, but if you want, you can consider this, but it's like, it's, it's relatively expensive, but they just give you all these components, right? Which are, for example, if I open this, you see right here is also the code for Tailwind, this page right here, which has been completely built with Tailwind. So they have like a component level thing going on, as well for them just like bootstrap it, it is paid however so i would recommend you to use css tailwind css if you want to stay closer with css when you're working which is usually a good idea when you're trying to build something unique and which you know you would be working for a long time for something which you need to bootstrap literally very quickly overnight in a couple of days on a weekend then i think bootstrap is a great place to start as well there is no right or wrong answer here i think this is in today's time it is more about preference compared to what should be the real standard but in general you should not be starting any of them if you are not comfortable with css itself with that being said you should check out codedamp's full stack learning path which does start with html and css basics and we do cover tailwind in that learning path as well as our primary choice for learning a css framework right you would find all the links in the description but yeah let me know what you think about this 
bootstrap versus tailwind which one you have used the most and which one do you prefer or would advise other people to use and why that is all for this video make sure you leave a like and subscribe to the channel i'm gonna see you in the next video really soon if you're still watching this video make sure you comment down in the comment section i watched this video till the end also if you're not part of code dumps discord community you are missing out a lot on events which we organize on a weekly basis to code you already know the drill make sure you like the video subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and thank you so much for watching